so for our seventh question here. Um, calcium carbide content, contains the acet, uh, acetylide ion, uh, C22 minus, sketch the molecular orbital energy, energy level diagram for the ion and the electron dot structure. Okay, so in uh, constructing molecular orbital diagrams for homonuclear diatomics, the biggest thing we need to remember uh, is that our 2p orbitals um, have two options for how they overlap. Um, so one way is for is to result in a sigma orbital, two pi orbitals here, uh, two antibonding pi orbitals here and a sigma or orbital up top, um, which should be roughly equally displaced about the middle. Um, so this would be a sigma, a pi, a pi star, and a sigma star. Um, or the two p orbitals could overlap to yield um, two pi orbitals downstairs, a sigma orbital, and then two pi orbitals and a sigma orbital. Uh, so pi, sigma, pi star, sigma star. Um, and it does this depending on where we are in the periodic table. So um, the cutoff is here, so this side uses this one, and this side uses this one. So oxygen and fluorine uh, will use um, this version, and carbon and nitrogen back will use uh, this one, so the lower of the two. And since we are doing C2, 2 minus, that means that we're going to use um, this this version of our 2p overlap, or this molecular orbital diagram. Okay. So um, after that, now that that's taken care of, I'm just going to do the full MO diagram now. So our 2p orbitals, so for our carbon and our carbon, Our 2p orbitals will be here, and our 2s will be here, and um, not to mess up any of the spacings. Okay. So we're going to get couple and like this roughly like that so we've got a sigma a sigma star a pi sigma pi star and sigma star where the um, the unstarred molecular orbitals are bonding and the starred are antibonding Okay, so in carbon, we uh, would normally have uh, four valence. And so then in um, C2, oops, what am I doing? Well, what am I doing? All right, so then in C2, which is in the middle, we would have um, piling in all these electrons. Uh, that would be four, eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's C2, but then uh, we need a minus two charge, so that's an extra two electrons. So then there is our molecular orbital 
uh, structure for uh, C2, 2 minus. Okay, so we can see um, that if we do the bond order out, so our bond order is our number of bonding electrons minus our number of antibonding electrons all over two. So if we count this up here, we have two, four, six, eight bonding electrons, and we have two antibonding divided by two, six over two, which equals three. So we have a triple bond. Um, so the questions, uh, there's five questions um, asked in this question. There's five, <laughs> five smaller questions. So the first is um, how many sigma bonds and pi bonds. So we can see here that we have one, two pi bonds and a sigma bond. So there's uh, one sigma and two pi bonds. So that would be net as well because this sigma bond is being canceled with this sigma antibond. So we would just count the top ones basically. Uh, very similar to uh, counting valence. Um, the next question is the bond order, which I guess I answered there. So our bond order is um, is three. Uh, the next question is to compare um, compare valence bond theory with MO theory. So our valence, um, if we look at, say, our Lewis structure, right, um, where for C22 minus, we need um, four times two equals eight valence electrons, but then we need to add two for this, so we need 10 total so we need to add a couple more and then but then these three can give us our triple bond so that that would be C so we would have a triple bond so in both cases we get a triple bond on our carbon which corresponds to our bond order of three um, so uh, yeah, so valence valence bond theory and MO theory um, agree in this case. Okay, and um, for D, the question is how does the uh, bond order change? in going from C2 to C2 to minus. So if we look at our MO diagram, which I'm just going to re-sketch out, but just the, um, just the top orbitals. So we have a pi, a sigma, a pi star, and a sigma star. And so this was uh, C2. And we went to this with C2, 2 minus. And so our bond order here is equal to uh, 4 over 2, which equals 2. And our bond order here is 6 over 2, which equals 3. So we went from um, a double bond in C2 
to a triple bond in C2 2 minus. And then um, the last question is um, is it paramagnetic? And the answer is no. It's diamagnetic. And it's diamagnetic because um, all the electron spins are paired in our MO diagram. So we need unpaired spin for it to be paramagnetic. And so just to reiterate this, if we look at our MO diagram, all the spins of all the electrons are paired. And so it will be um, diamagnetic. Okay. So now if we look down through the solutions given, um, it's a triple bond, so there's one sigma two pi bonds. Our bond order can be computed with this equation, which comes out to be three. Um, for C, I don't know what they're answering there. Oh, uh, Bayless bond theory gives us three. I don't know what they're saying there, but that's okay. Um, so adding electrons increase the bond order. Um, specifically, we went, we went from two to three. Um, and C2, two minus is diamagnetic since they're all paired. That looks good. All right.